Good evening all, how you doing? Let's see who's lurking today, with our little gang. So I can definitely see uh, Darius and Jace are here. And Twitch is actually showing Darius now, which wasn't a minute ago. Oh, Decaf Smurf and Infinisil. Hey, it's just us. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> Darius is doing fucking great now. Awesome, man. Hey, Jace, um, awesome talk, by the way. I haven't made it all the way through, so unless it goes downhill really fast after about halfway through, it's a great talk. Um, Jace been, uh, did a talk on uh, non-deterministic programming in Common Lisp, and it was very cool. Um, I actually wanted to ask you a question, which I'll, I'll just abuse my power now to be able to do that directly, which is, um, how would you contrast uh, the stuff that you were showing off in there um, with uh, things like, oh, there's a prologue implementation in Common Lisp that was done by uh, Steve Losh. Let's go have a look. Let's get let's get some links going here. So, all right, Darius, we're getting there. We'll get there. Um, here we go. Uh, Steve Losh. Um, this. This guy's awesome. Um, let's have a look. Dun, 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 dun. Not charms. Chance three. Temperance. Logic programming. Because the backtracking sounded uh, kind of similar. There we go. Links. Right. Uh, I can do these. Let's have a look. Bam. Temperance. And uh, Jace's thing was actually on... Ready, come on. Slash, oh, slash Lisp. Pretty sure. Everything went wrong while loading. Welcome to the front page of the internet. It's broken. Really? Well, that's special. I don't have to just fuck off. Right, down in here somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, a lot of me. Jesus. I really wish they wouldn't auto-expand these. Um, oh, yeah, this is it. Introduction to Screamer. Bam. Jace was saying, very similar idea. I actually implement a really slow pro prologue-ish lang at the end of that. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, Screamer's backtracking engine is basically the core of a prologue. Nice. So it has kind of some kind of relationship to... Um, oh, what are they called? Like the Warren kind of virtual machine stuff. Or at least a bit of it. Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of that. I have just been snowed under recently. Game stuff has been keeping me busy. And it's been one of those days where it's just a fight. And I haven't won yet. Anyway, this is the scene we had last time. Um, I'm not sure what we'll actually be doing more on this. But it's kind of got to that point where we need to have more interesting things to look at. Um, I was looking at a bunch of potential things. And uh, I haven't seen Metian around yet, um, uh, but he was asking about, um, what was it, In, uh, drawing gel lines instanced, I think, well at least 3D lines. Um, that's a kind of broad area, so I'm going to wait for them to turn up and then we can ask them some line related questions. Basically, I'm happy to do anything today. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking of doing... Uh, was I kept on looking around and I was started looking more at things I haven't done yet. I, it would be really cool to do some um, GPU skinning. Um, of course, to do this, we're going to need 3D models. We're going to need uh, 3D, well, with animation data and all this kind of stuff. There are some guides around for this kind of thing uh, with this this model, which is amazing. But it comes with Asimp, uh, which is a model loader that we'll look at. Um, and so there is some sample code and there's some things we can play with. So there's some stuff we could do to get started. There's also, as far as interesting scenes go, there's some um, things that get used a lot in graphics papers, um, like the uh, Crytek sponsor? Sponsor? Um, scene and all these kind of things that have been cleaned up and made OBJ so they can, basically this is a dump of uh, resources that can be referenced from papers. So again, you can you can understand what you're looking at and actually be looking at something interesting when you're reading these papers or something valid. Um, so yeah, 
there's a there's a bunch of stuff here and it all kind of hinges on the idea we're going to need some uh, model loading so um i was thinking i would just have a play with asimp today and just see what's there um but i'm actually really really open today to doing whatever people want so if there's any kind of gl questions any lispy questions anything like that um, i'm happy to i won't might not know the answers but we can definitely look into some of the stuff so i've downloaded a couple of the, these already just so i wasn't lagging the stream so in 3d models i've got oh did i just extract it straight here this is going to be the sponsor um scene and there's a bunch of textures and things from that so that's definitely something we can start with but we're going to need a um we're going to need asset loading so i was thinking we would let's go back to play with verts and assets i was thinking we would extend um the things class so we can uh, load meshes and then we would um yeah try and do some model loading inside here but one thing i am very aware of uh is that when i try and get class imp now oh one second if, if i can actually type i'm super tired this evening <laughs> if i try and load class imp, um i get some issues so it's unable to load any of these alternatives um and i it could be just it's not installed. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, sudo, um, oh, what's it? Apt cache, is it like that? Search, I can't remember if it's a hyphen in there. Uh, lib asimp, there it is. Okay, so yeah, now what they're shipping is lib asimp four and the uh, bindings are expecting um, lib, lib asimp three. So you can see down here. Um, so that's out of date, <laughs> which is a bit of a problem. Um, I do have a project, um, which I just kind of leave uh, lying around, called Classim Fallback Libs. And all it is is a build of the 32 and 64-bit uh, versions of um, Asimp 3. Uh, so we can use this for now. It's not in Quick Lisp, but fear not, because the ever-awesome Borodust um seems to be on the case um i saw this come up the other day he's working he's got some um wrapper in the works uh for Asim. and as usual because he's awesome he ships um the binaries as a associated package uh, that you can use with this so this doesn't seem to be in quick lisp yet or at least i don't think it is let's actually let's, let's just check um Ugh. Forge person. No, and I don't think I'm uh out of date. Yeah, I'm up to date with everything. So that's not in there yet, but I have no doubt that it will be in time. All of his stuff seems to get shipped with good cadence and all that kind of stuff. Man's awesome. So this is very exciting, but for now, what I'm going to just do is uh, look at, um, what was it called? Classimp. Uh, oh, that's not how you do this. Uh, fallback libs, I think it was called. And now that works. Um, so then we should be able to load uh, Classimp. Uh, it, it takes advantage of one of these things where in CFFI, um, once a DLL is loaded, if you try and load it again, it uses the one that's already loaded. Um, so I just load it with exactly the same name as Classimp uses, and then Classimp thinks it's already loaded and everything's fine. Uh, well, it knows it's already loaded. So, um, yeah, we're gonna need some. We're gonna need something to pull in. Let's go have a look at um, Classimp, actually. There's a uh, Classimp, and then there was something like load, not load scene. It was a weird name, something to do with scene, though, I think. Oh, no, it wasn't. Nothing to do with scene. Import into Lisp. And what this does, this is going to be slow. It pulls it all into Lisp data, um, which is, yeah. I mean, it, it'll work. It'll let us explore things. Um, 
I'm a little behind on the uh, chat. Let's look over here. So, um, Jason is saying, and once you add the logic variables, you have everything you need for a full logic constraint program. That's really cool. Um, hey, Kay Ekram. Good to see you. Hey, Ree, how you doing, man? Um, oh, straight on the ball. Looks like one of the normal map channels are inverted. That is good to know. Um, yeah, it probably is. <laughs> and that's going to be setting off for a while. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure if... I'm not sure how I'm cocking this up right now. Um, and I wasn't planning on looking at it right yet. Uh, but I will get back to you on that one. Because that would be uh, good to know what I'm fucking up there. Because I think we actually flipped something deliberately <laughs> in the stream. Um, so I'll need to... Oh, blimey, actually. Let's have a look. I am fried from the um, Tailspire stuff today, man. So we will see what's going on. Um... Ah, oh, where's the normal map stuff? Here we go. Okay, so... We... Oh yeah, we... We get the normal from the map. We... Um, remap it and normalize it. But then... We don't actually, I must admit, we don't flip it. So, um... Probably why. Let's just have a look then. Let's, uh... Feel free to call me out if I'm doing anything stupid here, because... Naturally, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um... How's that? Actually, seems we were looking at this bit before. Let's uh, drop back down here again. Looks great. Awesome. Thanks, man. This is why I like to work with this guy, because he just fucking knows this stuff. That's really cool. I'll, um, I'll commit that now, actually, because um, that was one of the things we actually read from the tutorial. Um, so it should have been in there, which is cool. Um, flip the, um, flip the uh, Y. And the normal. That is as good an explanation as you're going to get out of my head today. Okay, so... Let's look at the class imp import stuff. Um, and this is going to... Right, so the general idea with these libraries is even though they're slow, um, they allow us to take a bunch of different formats, pull in all the data, and then we can process it. And we wouldn't... I don't generally want to ship... Um, these asset formats themselves anyway. I'd much rather pack the data in uh, into buffers the way I'm going to use it and then drop that stuff to disk. Um, because then all we need to do is like memmap a file and upload it straight to the GPU or just, you know, read in the bytes and upload them to GPU. Either way, um, it's going to be a lot faster than passing it again in the future. But for now, let's do the slow thing. 3D uh, models. Let's have a look. Sponsor.obj. Let's see what happens. Oh, that actually didn't take very long at all. Def for uh, scene. I mean, too slow for, for gams, but... And now we're going to go and inspect this and see what we've got. So, we have no animations, no cameras, no flags, no lights. That's fine. Um, we have some root node that we can look at. We've got a bunch of meshes here, which will be interesting. Um, we have a bunch of materials as well. Let's go see what these guys are, because that'll be interesting. Um, so we've got a ton of information here, actually. So Might be worth keeping hold of this. 
I mean, we definitely just pull it in when we need it, uh, telling us what kind of shading they were using and things like that, and whatever. And whatever this um, was authored in. Ah, here we go, wait a second. Now I'm seeing texture files. Was that mentioned in the other one? No. Ah, so we just get hash tables and we just expected to look things up in there. Yeah, interesting. We might have to have a search around to see what the uh, ASIM kind of formats are. Um, shininess and opacity and... Well, this looks promising. I'm seeing bump. Oh, why not normal maps? We've just done normal maps. It's a perfect time for us to be doing normal maps. Nope, we're going to be doing bump mapping. Um, fair enough. I haven't actually done that yet, so that'll be interesting. Um, relief bump. Anyway. Uh, let's go back and inspect that object again, because I forgot where I put that buffer. There we go. Uh, let's have a look at meshes. We've got a fuck ton of these. And they... Okay. This is the kind of stuff we're going to need. Um, so, faces. Oh, what a bummer. These are all being described as quads. I think. Wait, what? Hmm... <laughs> okay. Oh fuck. Why do I keep closing that um that window? That's really annoying. Um Let's go back in again. I think there are ways of uh loading the scene while telling it to do some processing. So let's have a look at important to lisp as some arguments hopefully. Oh yeah, slime enable some current hints. There we go. Processing flags. So we need to go and look what those flags might be. Um, Johnny Reese says, different engines already handle green differently. OpenGL conversion versus DirectX conversion. So the next normal map uh, you use might be inverted again. Hey, that's good to know. Median, Hey, good to see him, dude. Uh, we were talking about you a second ago. Um, you were asking about... Um, what were you asking about? You were asking about lines. And yeah, I was having a think about this before the stream, and I know I've kind of touched on this before, but there are a bunch of different... Like, drawing lines is a surprisingly big topic, and um, I couldn't narrow it down enough to make it into some kind of content for a stream. So, I mean, of course, there's GL lines, which we looked at once before, and you mentioned instancing, which we can definitely do. It won't take us long to do at all, um, if you want to see how that code works. But the GL lines are ugly. Um, they're the same thickness, no matter about depth. Um, and they look different on different GPUs. The standard is very annoying. And their behaviors, the way they're defined is shitty. Um, so GL lines are just bad. Um, and then it's how else would we want to do them? We could do it with um, uh, billboards. So that would be one approach. We could do it with uh, just with cylinders. If you want to do curves, we're into a different world of pain. Um, there's a lot of kind of scope there, but... Yeah, it, it, it's fiddly, and I wasn't sure what to go for. So if you can find an interesting technique around lines that you would like to see us do, then that would be um, then that would be easy. But, I mean, cylinders are kind of trivial to do. Like, we would just you would just make a cylinder mesh and uh, have some start and end points, and you could position um, those. Uh, we could do that. I suppose there's a few uh, interesting things we could do with that. But uh, we're having a, a little play with um, some asset loading stuff at the moment. Uh, Akikram, which parser loader is being used for the object files? Um, Asimp, um, named like this, um, is a uh, library for loading a bunch of different formats, including OBJ. Um, Many <laughs> says, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Oscar Wilde. Good quote. Man was full of good quotes. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, Darius has linked it already. See, I can't even... Function treat UVs. Uh, that where we flipped it. Did we? Oh, bollocks. Look at that. What oh, year? 
What have we got here? Okay, so... We flipped... Wait a second. Oh, no, no, no. That's just a... Uh, that was from another time when textures were loading upside down, I think. Yeah. That's a, that's a separate issue. <laughs> anyway. Import into this thing. Let's have a look at processing flags. Where do these go? Well, that's not too illuminating. Hmm. All right, let's go and have a look online. Uh, not there, that is not online. That's online. Asim flags. Postprocess.h. So, here's a bunch of things. Postprocess steps. All possible postprocessing steps. Let's copy this. Drop them down here. This is probably available somewhere very obvious, but send it me. Right. So we've got things for calc tangent space. So I think like the way this is going to be defined in Lisp generally is going to be uh, it's going to be as keywords. Um, we don't have to worry about the values so much. So let's do um, this. Ooh, that's enough. Um, and any, any way that it's uppercase is basically going to end up being um, a hyphen. I think that's right. So let's just look for triangulate and see if it's in um, if it's listed in here somewhere. It would be good to know. Um, Okay, here we go. This seems to be... Okay, so the, the formatting is unusual, but... These seem to be the... Um, the keys we're interested in. So I was totally wrong. But let's have a look at them anyway. So we've got... Um, calculating tangent space sounds, no, uh, sounds useful. So let's... Uh, Let's copy this because we'll need this soon. Um, make left-handed. We're using a left-handed coordinates. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Right-handed for geo. Triangulate. Yes, we don't want to be dealing with quads. Let's get it triangulated. Um, gen normals. I hope it already has normals. Let's just go and check that because that would be rather annoying if it didn't. Pretty sure it did though. Um, Meshes. Meshes. Normals. Nil. Oh. That's exciting. Okay. Let's have some normals too. Um. Oh, do 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 do. Pre transform vertices, limit bone weights, validate data structure. Improve cache locality, remove redundant materials. Um, let's have a look. Fixing facing normals. Again, UV cords. There seem to be UV cords now when we were looking a second ago. Um, we can flip UVs if, it, if that works out, ends up being useful. Okay. We need at least these guys, it seems. Um... Darius, yeah, I remember flipping those UVs as well, which is why I got confused, but um, I guess it just got nuked uh, partway through. <laughs> right, so, there we go again. Let's try this again. Set if uh, scene, be that. And now when we inspect it, we can go back into our meshes and hopefully... Um, we can see now that our faces are... Triangles, indexes into, um, yes. Yes, three indices per um, 
face. So that's good. And we have normals now as well. Um, not sure what kind of state they're in, but we can definitely start with them. Oh, and I love closing that thing right now. It's really good how often I do it. Um, here we go. And we've got tangents. No buy tangents. Was there an option for buy tangents? That would have been useful. Unless they're in sets of two. No. Hmm. Well, we've got normals and tangents. We can generate buy tangents easy enough. Can we? Mm hmm. Yes, but actually, when we were having to generate that before, we had to be really careful about getting those things right. So, no, but it should be. It's orthonormal. So, if you have two, you can get the third one. I think implicitly, I suppose it's which side matters. Hmm. We'll have to have a see. Okay, right. Anyway, we can get back to that. And texture chords. Um, they seem to be three texture coordinates for each one, but that's not a problem. We can just use two. Um, and we've got our vertices, which is very much what we want. Um, element type is single float, which is excellent. So this is already kind of in a place where we could we can consume this. So, I mean, we could actually... Let's try to play with a few. Let's see what we would need. Let's uh, take this. F R. Uh, temp zero is that, and then make a GPU array, which is temp zero, the element type of vec three, um, and yeah, then we have uh, really only two hundred fifty six. Oh, I guess it's just this one mesh, isn't it? So we've got a whole bunch of meshes in here. Um, but we'll probably want to loop through all this stuff and pack them together with some of the other information. Um, So like, oh, wait a second. This seems to be an array of arrays of arrays. What is this? So, I don't know. What am I seeing there then? So this is a simple vector. Oh, of total size one, okay. I don't know why. I don't know why I keep closing this fucking thing. But it's not going to be the last time I, don't, I close the fucking thing. Right. Texture coordinates. Oh, I suppose because we could have many textures. Uh, Johnny Reese says, as long as all UVs are facing correctly. Oh, that's good to know. Cheers, ma'am. Um... Yep, we consult the professionals on this matter. If it's visual, I'm going to delegate. Well, at least delegate knowledge. So yes, I, this this could be an array of... Like we've got 256 vertices, but we might have multiple textures of varying opacities being blended together, in which case uh, we would need texture cords for all of those. Maybe even it's being used for like materials and things like that. But you'd expect those to be laid out in the same way, wouldn't you? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how things are done in the world. So um, anyway, normals. Um, there's a whole lot of normals there. It's interesting. Oh yeah, we're looking at a different one now. So it's, yeah, 584. Good, that is actually the same length at least. Phew. And then faces is going to be an entirely different length. Nice. Let's uh, try and make a function that will take one of these meshes and give us a... Um, Something we can consume. Um, so let's take the position, the normal, the tangent, and the texture chords. Um, and... Oh wait, what I'm fucking talking... What an idiot! There's the bitangents up there. How am I that blind? Were they really there on the other one as well? Because I feel like a fucking idiot. Yep, there they are. Just looking at us straight in the face. By tangents and tangents. Knob. And you, people, you are fuck-ups too for not spotting that sooner. <laughs> I'm going to take all this humiliation. Right, so. 
Right, let's uh, let's get some code. Uh, let's go back to assets, and we're going to have a. Um, let's just define a struct for this. So def struct g um, asset mesh, and it's going to have a pos, which is a vec three. It should be a vec three. Let's make sure our vertices are all vec threes. Yes, good. Have a normal, uh, which is a vec three. We're gonna have a. Uh, we're gonna have a tangents, uh, which was vec three. Surprise, surprise. Pi tangents, which is vec three. Um, UV, which is um, from our text chords, which is gonna be a vec two. Um, let's just pop this down here. Um, what else were we going to take? Y tangents. Faces is going to be separate. Materials index. One. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on that in, when we're loading stuff. Um, primitive types. Four. Okay, don't know what that is, but we'll find out later. Tangents. Text chords. Vertices. Okay. Um, acid mesh to GPU array. Um, arrays because we're going to have multiple. So we're going to take a mesh, which is going to be one instance of this. Um, we're going to assume that, in fact, let's not assume, let's assert um, that oh, with slots. Actually, we're probably going to need to include this package because we've been fucking around with this stuff, but we haven't actually uh, tried to access anything from the REPL or um, our code yet. So let's put classimp here and see what fucks up. It causes name conflicts because of those things. Okay, so we're going to abort that and we're going to say fuck it and we'll just have to qualify things explicitly. Um, which is going to be rather annoying for some of this stuff, but um, it will have to do, it will have to do. Right, so what do we need from here? Vertices, so class imp, vertices, um, class imp, uh, normals, class imp, um, tangents, by tangents. Now, I think there's a bit of a syntax we can use with slots so we can give it a variable name. There we go. So rather than just using the slot name all the way down, we'll clear this up in a second. Let's have a look. So class imp, um, texture chords, and we're also going to need um, faces. And then what we'll do is let's just grab this. Um, whoops. Not quite the way I wanted to do it, but that's fine. Take all of these, get rid of that. So we can just refer to them as vertices, faces, yada, yada, yada. Um, we're just going to assert that a bunch of things are equal. Um, I want to know that the vertices, normals, tangents, by tangents, and texture chords are all of a similar length so let's take that that's rather annoying that's not how i imagine that worked okay gotta learn you gotta learn how to use your tools so copy and then if we go down to the end and paste oh then it's something like that okay hmm sure while I was in that mode, I should have pressed new line as well, so I didn't have to do that, but... Okay, so we've got an assert there. That's really dumb, Chris. That's not how Lisp works. Okay, so... Let's, um, let's try this again. Length. There we go. Undefined variable. Really? Oh yeah, wait a second, I'm using this wrong, aren't I? 
mesh goes here and coffee. We need more coffee. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> Darius said, God damn it. Guess you could nickname Class M to AI or something like that. Totally could, but um Oh yeah, that's a good point. Wait a second. You can set Hmm. Oh. Do they have a nickname for it? Is that what you're saying? Um, let's have a look. Ah. Oh shit, yeah, it's nicknamed AI. Oh, that's way nicer. Okay, fuck all this noise. Boom. Okay, right. And now, um, with that done, we're gonna loop um, for V across, that's not how you spell across, uh, vertices for, yeah, let's move that down, for N across normals for, ah, um, oh, we can't use T, TA across tangents, for BT across bitangents. And we are going to do something. We are going to... Well, let's make ourselves a GPU array first. Make GPU array. With no initial contents, with dimensions equal to... Length of vertices with element type equal to asymp mesh um, and then it's freaking out just because um, loop is incomplete and then we're going to set f how's the best way of doing this okay let's uh, just do for um, a equals RFC. This isn't probably the greatest way, but it'll work. Um, RFC, what's our array called? Oh yeah, that's why it's throwing an error, because we didn't give it a name. All right, it's V array, um, set F, or A ref, V array, um, and then I, where, for I from zero, okay. And then we're going to have to set the uh, fields. So, asymp mesh um, pos of A is uh, V. And we're going to do a bunch of these. Boop, boop, boop. Let's fill it in. Normal is N for tangent is TA for bitangent is BT. Um, UV is. Um, do we not grab our texture cords? Or TC across texture cords. Now, there's a f there's something wrong here though because our. Um, Texture cords are currently VEC3s when we looked at the mesh data. Um, and so we want to convert them. Let's just uh, let's just do it the lazy way and do this. Yeah. We're going to be allocating so much stuff. But again, it doesn't really matter. We can dump this to disk later um, if we really care. Um, TC, Y, TC. So hopefully... I haven't screwed everything up. Yep, there's a conversion cost. Um, that's kind of annoying, actually, that that mentioned that conversion cost when we're not in a block that's saying um, optimize for speed. I know why it's doing it, because this is expanding to something. This is inlining some stuff that is uh, optimized for speed. So, hmm, I need to have a look at that. So, once again, 
let's go back to the scene. Let's go to meshes and let's take one of these meshes. If you hold down alt and press return when you're in the inspector, it brings that object over to the REPL. Um, and then you can do something with it. So let's just call it temp1. Um, something that's really nice about that is you can get to the inspector whenever you have a... Um, whenever you cause an exception. Let's just do one for example. Um, is it just error? Uh, error foo. Uh, fo. When you have an error, come up to the text up the top and hit return. And it will inspect the, um, the error itself. And there will be format arguments. So if this was error fo one two, whoops. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, we go here and go up to the top, and you can access the um, format arguments as data. And often there's a useful object in there, so being able to alt enter and just pull that over to your REPL is super useful. Um, the other thing as well, actually, while I'm doing that, is it normally works in um, items in the stack traces as well. So we take anything like this, and we kick this list down here as well. And it in turn, because it's an active thing, we can right-click on it and expect that, inspect that. Really useful. One of the great things to be able to do is take a function call that you know is going wrong, get the arguments out of it, and stick them in a list, and then you can call that function over and over again with the context that it was called in. Which is really nice. Um, so as long as you're not doing anything super crazy stateful, it's pretty good. Normally the objects you're passing around are just just enough. Um, so temp one. Let's have a look. Um, what's going on over here? Pom to pimp. Hello. You are late, but it's good to have you here, man. AV light everything. Yes. Yeah, we've even got the door open because it's actually starting to get out. Well, the curtains open because it's it's starting to get dark again here in Norway. The the nights are coming in. 51, not 50 in the title. Ah, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I am so bad at this. A year of year and a half of doing this doesn't uh, mean I'm any good at it. Right, come on. Oh, that's really nice. Sometimes when I switch, um, switch computers, the keyboard doesn't move across, which is... Let's just call this 3D assets or something. 3D assets. Update information. Cool, that's done. Thank you, sir. Right. Darius is saying, damn slime is so impressive, full of gems. Yeah, man, it's really, really useful. I just fucking love it. It, it There's something about it that's just... Um, Pom to Pimp say, use a KVM switch between two computers. I am using a KVM switch between two computers. This is apparently one of the better ones, and it's still kind of shitty. I've used so many different fucking KVMs over the years, and... They're never 100% reliable. They're always like, oh, there's either always something wrong with a build or the wiring in time or this or that or some shitty software that they're partnered with. It sucks. It's so annoying. I'm using, uh, I can't remember which ones I'm using now. I've used Belkin ones before. I've used a ton of different brands. They all suck somehow. Every single one. It's super annoying. Uh, anyway. Oh, right. Asset mesh to GPU arrays. Am I in the wrong place? Play with Verts? I didn't play with Verts. Where are you? Am I just typing it wrong? Probably am. Yeah, I was. That was it. I'm just typing badly. Okay, the assertion is not true. Um, because the fifth one has a length of one. Yes, it does. Yay, assertions. Um, and the reason is that texture chords, remember, was an array of arrays of arrays. So we actually only need the first one. So we're going to... Um, We're gonna go texture chords is elements uh, of texture chords zero. Um, I should actually do this, really, I should do this up here because otherwise it's kind of a bit useless for the assert. We want our assert to check things, so why put it further down? 
Um, and now we don't need to do this. Okay. Value GPU element array asset mesh blah 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 is not of type C array. Oh yeah, I'm an idiot. Okay. Yeah, so what I could do is I could make this a C array and then upload it to the GPU, or I could just make the GPU array um, and then say with GPU array um, as C array. Um, Oops, we need to do B array. We'll just call it C array temporarily. And that should work. There we go. There's a GPU array with some data in it. Nice. So that's going to be our mesh stuff. Let's free that for now. Uh, but we're also going to need uh, the indices, which is the faces stuff. So let's do that as well. Um, and this one will be easy, I think. Um, let's just comment this out for a second. And just return a... Uh... Oh, fuck, it doesn't matter. It didn't take that long. Let's return this and faces. Actually, no, I can just remember what they were like. Faces were just a big array of three things. Three numbers. Um, but... Generally, with the index array, we would just want one big linear array of shorts, and then depending on how the rendering is done, it's going to expect it's going to look at different number of indices uh, per primitive. So let's make a let's make an uh, index array, which is a GPU array with nothing in it. Its dimensions are. Um, three times the length of the faces like that and the uh, element type is going to be uh, unsigned short I think I think that's fine and then uh, let's do up here with GPU array as C array We'll just call it C array again because they're not in the same scope. It doesn't matter. This, will take, this time we're taking the I array. We're going to loop for. Um, hmm. You can't uh, destructure arrays in a loop as well, can you? That would be kind of cool, but I don't think you can. Destructure. Whoop. No. That would have been cool, but unnecessary. Okay, so loop four. Um, indices in. What am I doing? Indices in. Uh, fucking faces. That was it. I'll get there. Um. And then we're going to do set if um, so for i from 0 uh, by 3. That should work, shouldn't it? And then set if a ref c of um, c array to be i. And that's going to be the x. That's going to be a ref. Um, what is it? C array, no. Ah. Indices. Oh, that's not going to be in, it's going to be across because we're going over an array. Uh, zero. And then we can just do like this. Plus one. Plus two. And I hate having them in that order. Blah. Is that okay? Is something like that okay?
Um, and then at the end, we should get back the IRA. Cool. Okay, so that's our indices and our mesh. That's actually enough for us to draw something. Um, ooh, what's going on here? Blimey, I've been missing stuff. I love that you people are chatty today. Um, Jay says, I've had a KV uh, KVM switch killer Windows box before. I absolutely fucking believe that. Bastards. It's amazing how there's there's just not enough market pressure there for them to be good. Like, there's not enough people that need them. Um, so the people that are there get business regardless of how good they are. And it's just... Ugh. Pomnipim, but symbol Belkin one. The Belkin ones are generally better. Um, yeah, in this case, what was it this time? Oh, this was just one I got that actually was... I've had a couple of these um, ones I just used at work. And it was, uh, was alright. Mackle72 is saying, If I have Emacs with Slime and Quicklisp and a clone of Keppel examples repo, how do I then run the Keppel triangles example? Great question. Let's do it. Because we can always come back to this. Let's nuke everything. Death. Death. It's gone. It's all gone. Right. So what we do is we start slime. We are going to... Are you able to quick load it would be the main question. So what I'm just going to do is uh, quick load couple examples. Um, and that should load okay. Now... It has a bunch of dependencies. Lisp, the works, Keppel.examples. One of them being Asim, which is rather annoying. So I'm just going to um, class him fallback libs. Ah, circular dependency. Okay. Shit to you. You bastards. Right. That's loaded. Okay, so now I'll uh, load Keppel examples, and hopefully this time it will work rather than making me sound like a liar. But yes, um, Keppel examples has a few dependencies. Uh, Keppel requires a host uh, called Keppel SDL2. Um, it, well, this is one of the hosts, and it's just basically saying who has the information I need to be able to create a GL context and create a window, and some very simple stuff. Um, Keppel.sdl2 just is a bit of bootstrapping that helps Keppel get started. Um, RTG Math, I'm using my maths library and RTG Math Vari. Again, these are all, all of these are in uh, QuickLisp, as is Dendrite, Skidder, all these kind of stuff. Skidder is all about um, input. It um, uses um, SDL2 behind the scenes in this case. Um, a lot of these libraries are broken apart because people get kind of antsy when you just build monolithic things. So I'm trying to componentize, I've tried to componentize things. Um, so yes, once that's loaded, what you need to do is run Keppel REPL and I will check um, what's going on here. Um, <laughs> Michael says, I'm getting help already. He said, you are, you are. But uh, it is worth doing this. Um, we run Keppel REPL which is going to open a window. Um, once that's done, you're actually ready to go. Um, and then you can go to examples, triangle, for example. Um, and then we can just do control C, control Q, which compiles everything. Oh, I better be in the right package. So keppel.examples. And then I should be able to say run loop and we get a triangle. So let's see where we are um, with stuff that that's just so like everyone who's watching along can follow i'll i'll get into your specifics as well now um so jace was asking about um da -da 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 -da. system keppel examples not found okay so and then jace rightly asks where did you clone the examples uh for people who are newer to lisp what you probably want to do is clone it to the um, your local, um, what do they call it? When you install uh, QuickLisp, it has a local projects folder. Um, clone stuff in there, and then Lisp will know where to find it. Well, QuickLisp will know where to find it, and AD ASDF will know where to find it. Um, and Jace explains exactly that, which of course is correct. 
Um, spelled it correctly, just cloned into a temp directory. The easiest way to make it findable by Quicklisp. One of the things that you might have to do, if you've put it in a directory that Quicklisp should be able to see, like if you put it in a subdirectory of local projects, um, you might have some issues. Let's just stop this for a second. Um, uh, Quicklist might not have found it yet. What you can do is you can say register local projects. You give that a second and it's going to go on through and re-find all the ASDs under that directory structure. So sometimes that can be helpful too. And I'll keep going following Jace's uh, chain of knowledge. Um, Yeah, so I don't ship Keppel examples um, in Quicklisp uh, because there's a lot of stuff that's kind of a moving target. Same with Keppel tests. I don't put them uh, directly in there. But pretty much all of the dependencies are in there. So you should just be able to clone Keppel.examples and then uh, Quicklisp, uh, no, QL quickload Keppel.examples and it should work. Um, you will occasionally see some issues when you... Um, load a different example. When I compile this, you might see a couple of warnings going, oh my god, I'm redefining things. And that's because I've used the same name in a bunch of um, the files. Um, so yeah, that, that, will, that will cause warnings and occasionally issues, but like it very rarely. Um, and of course, like with any of the stuff we've been doing on the stream, you can go and, you know, change anything at any time and Recompile it and see how it reacts. I cannot explain how how happy I was when I first got that moving triangles example working. That was the compiler all working and all that kind of stuff for the first time. God, that was such a simple compiler. Like, I mean, even the one we got now isn't that souped up, but still. Uh, what to do about libassemp? Sorry, missed the explanation. Yeah, that's... um. Jace, Jace was saying that you can use your package manager, but that's the problem that I've been having as well, which is on recent Ubuntu, they're shipping lib asymp4, and um, the asymp uh, wrapper that we've got for Lisp is out of date. It works for um, number three. So what you can do is in uh, github.com slash cbaggers, there should be, I think I put it up here. And I will uh, drop a link into the chat in just a second. You can pull this. And as long as you're on um, Windows, Mac, or Linux 64-bit, um, or apparently just Windows 32-bit, um, that should all work. Windows 32-bit, your mileage may vary, because I think I might have fucked that up too. <laughs> Um, and in which case, like we've, uh, like I was doing on the stream a second ago, what I would recommend doing is just restarting Slime, um, loading our class M fallback libs hack because it is a hack, um, and then loading um, Keppel dot examples. Home to pimp. What? <laughs> what? What's the imp mean? Um, yes. I think they mentioned on their site that they're German and they didn't notice the uh, <laughs> the uh, other implication immediately, but I may be making that up. Or they might have been lying. Who knows? Anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's couple examples. Also, for those who want to uh, help out with some things, it's always nice if you want to run the Keppel tests. Um, there's nothing visual to it. Um, you also don't need to start Keppel before you run it. Um, it will, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of tests. You can go and check those out. It does some fairly funky things inside there as well. So if you want to see some of the more esoteric parts of, uh, of Keppel, there's, uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in there. For example, like used quite heavily as well. Like if we go into a lot of the tests, um, you will see, let's bring this up big. Rather than pipelines being defined outside of uh, functions, I define them uh, inline. So you have inline pipeline declarations with GPU lambdas. Um, yeah. So we're doing compute shaders with inline pipelines and all this kind of stuff. MapG is still the same. 
uh, using GPU fences, waiting for results and pulling stuff down. So, yeah, there's there's some weird stuff in there, but it's um, it's good. Some of the stuff that I run before each release. Talking of which, talking of which, actually, there's been there have been some um, feature things uh, from the last week, and it was thanks to Patreon people. So thank you all so much uh, for the 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 few of you who are doing that. I love you. There's actually quite a few. It's really nice. Um, it's basically it's funding uh, me to be able to go down to the coffee shop and work on Keppel on a weekend. It just changes scenery, clears the air. Um, so what I was working on then was let's just get into a package. Um, actually, yeah, let's go into the um, Keppel examples package. Uh, what I was looking at was um, PBOs, which is um, pixel buffer objects and it's all about letting um, uh, uploads and downloads be done asynchronously by handing over all the things to GL um, so if you're transferring from texture memory to buffer memory because the uh, driver owns both of those it can do that asynchronously as long as you don't touch that memory while it's happening um, it's done completely asynchronously is really fast um, you can use fences to check when that's done. But the advantage of it is it means we can start transferring easily, well, with the feature being implemented, transferring backwards and forwards between um, texture memory, buffer memory, and all that kind of stuff. Because before we've pushed something, like we've taken, I don't know, um, we make a C array with some stuff. One, two, three, four. And then we push G this to something, or we can just say, you know, make a GPU array with that thing, or make a texture with that thing. So this was taking a C array, which is kind of local memory, and then um, making either a buffer, a buffer backed array, or making a texture, which in this case, we're, um, if we look at it, uh, we'll see another GPU array, which is backed by texture memory. But now we can do all kinds of other transfers. So we can, uh, for example, um, take this guy. Um, how do we say copy to REPL? Def bar times zero. Uh, we can take a GPU array that's buffer backed and we can call make texture on it. And we get a texture, so that was just copied from GPU memory to GPU memory, different parts, different stuff, but same deal. Um, I've introduced a function called copy, um, which is a little different from pull and push. And that one of the problems I had was pull and push is what was really nice when we were pushing something to the GPU and then pulling something from the GPU. Um, uh, but when we're doing GPU to GPU type transfers, like within GPU memory, um, then it didn't really make sense anymore. Which direction are you pushing up or pulling down? Um, so, yeah, it sounded a bit weird. So, let's. Um, what we can now say is you can. Um, let's uh, let's actually just do something here. Let's do text ref on that last texture, and def var temp1 to be that. So temp0 is a GPU array, which is buffer backed, and temp1 is a GPU array that's texture backed. So let's bring those up again. Temp1. And hello, Barrett. I did see you there. I will catch up with you very soon. So if, now we can do, for example, um, we could... Let's copy some new data. So it takes four elements. So 9, 8, 7, 6. We're going to copy that to temp0. Um, so we just copied some Lisp data up to a buffer back texture. Um, so if we do pull G on temp zero now, we can see those values there. And if we pull G on temp one, we can still see the original data. So now that we transfer it from uh, temp zero to temp one. So again, this is a copy from buffer memory to texture memory. And now we can pull temp one again, and we can see that both of them have the same contents. Um, you can also copy to, you can just specify a keyword and say where you want it to go. So we can copy to C array and that pulls it from the GPU down and makes it local. Uh, you can copy it to, I think it's called Lisp data. That's not what it expected. 
Okay. Let's, was it just Lisp? Yep, there we go. And you'll get it back as um, a new uh, list. So yeah, there we go. New functionality, new things, um, and behind the scenes, uh, nice and efficient. There are fully typed versions, actually, of all the copy functions. So if you're interested, oh, blimey, am I in the right place? Oh, come on. Um, you can say copy buffer back to texture GPU array to texture back GPU array and stuff like this. Nice long function names, very precise types. <laughs> But uh, there's all those ones if you wanted to use them rather than the dynamic dispatch. Now, I've rambled for enough, but thank you so much to uh, Patreon people, Patroneers, for um, making that a lot more likely to happen. So, um, AK Graham saying, I'm running Vaxless on Ultrix over a 1900 ball connection. All oh, kibble tests are failing. File a bug report and send me a Vax machine. Um... <laughs> Pom de Vimps is Patreon equals, and then I've got a picture of, uh, yeah, of Slash and Osborne having tea with. It's tea time pictures. It is tea time pictures. Oh no, it's coffee time pictures. That's what it is. But yes, I must make it clear, the Patreon thing, before like I can see someone's going to do that, you are purely funding coffee. <laughs> that is all that's happening. There is no reason, or it's not even a good idea to fund it, right? So don't, but still, very much appreciated. It, it's just it, it's just nice to be able to get out and do some purely Keppel work. Um, it feels justified. There we go. Anyway. Barrett is in the house. Keep calm and carry on. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> right. We were doing things. But thank you uh, so much to... Um, was it... Crow I'm sorry, I can't remember who originally asked the question. Oh, it was Mackle. Mackle72. Uh, yeah, thanks for asking the question. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to go on these kind of... Well, pretty much always happy to go on these detours. So, let's um, get back to where we were meant to be. Play with verts. Oh yeah, I haven't started. Slime. We were making a function that takes uh, an asymp mesh and then goes and creates a thing out of it. Well, creates uh, some GPU arrays. We've got two arrays here. Um, so we should actually do something with this. Um, we're missing textures. We'll have to come back to that soon. We might have to do that sooner than later. Uh, but what we will want to do soon is um, to make one of our things out of... Oh, bloody hell. What's going on here? AI does not exist. Really? Oh, I bet I haven't actually loaded it, have I? Play with verts. ASD. Yeah. Okay. Um... Class imp, full back libs, and then class imp. Um, uh, what am I doing? QL, class imp, full back libs. There we go. QL, class imp. Yep. And because lisp is cool, we should be able to go back to sldb and say, say retry. <laughs> it all works. I love it. It doesn't work. Because I'm in the wrong package. There we go. In play with us. There we go. And play start. There we go. And it looks like garbage because the FBOs were the wrong size. But there we go. We're in. We're in. And normal maps look a little bit better because Johnny's awesome. Thank you, sir. An eye for these things. Right. Talking of things. We've got assets. Oh, more rain. Awesome. Um, okay. Let's just make a type for... Uh, 
Ah, same thing. For now, we're just going to let the uh, samplers be... Oh, we don't have a normal map, do we? Uh, this <laughs> Let's not provide it with something. That channel can just be nil for now. Um, we'll use the brick wall texture. Or rust. Where's the uh, rust one? Is it rust.jpg? Yeah, cool. Um, so this takes a stream when you make it. So you give it a stream. So let's. Um, we're gonna. This is actually gonna be kind of interesting. We kind of need a load uh, scene, don't we? Because there's gonna be a whole bunch of um, path. Actually, let's just for now. Let's just um, take a scene object. And we're gonna have to go through all the meshes and do this kind of stuff to it. Um, yeah, there's some other processing we need to. We need to get textures out of it and all that kind of jazz. But these can be actually be turned into the stream that this thing needs. So rather than returning this, we'll do make buffer stream. Um, and the GPU arrays, we only actually need to have D array, and then we need to say the index array is I array. And the primitive type is triangles. Yes, that's it. Okay. That should give us a stream that is renderable. Ah, defund. Fuck it. Take a mesh object. Cool. Asymp mesh to GPU arrays. Pass in the mesh. Get the stream. Make asymp thing no uh, make instance go away of asymp thing this is going to be a multi-week project just because I'm not very focused right now and it doesn't matter because it's just nicer talking to you guys um, is that what we need what else do they do You can pass in a position. Yeah, fuck it. We don't need that. Uh, but we do want to push it onto things. There we go. Push. There we go. Right. Now we've got the fuck it function. Let's go fuck it. Um... Class imp, import into Lisp. Let's uh, just um, copy this over here so I can remember it. Plus nil. So that runs. We get a scene. Um, we def our scene um, to that. We inspected the scene before and we went and, oh yeah, that's just the symbol scene. We inspected, inspected this, and we went and found a mesh. This is a mesh. How long is its vertices? Yes, lots, good, that'll do. Take that one. Def uh, temp zero is that, temp zero is a mesh, cool. So now if we call fuck it, with that. Um, come on. There should be somewhere. Something. Whatever that is. That's not very informative. But there is something there. Okay. Fuck it did something. So, uh, what do we do now? Let's try running fuck it on everything um so uh what do we do pop things that's gone um now let's go to um what is it slot value scene ai meshes no that's not how that works chris uh, five. Slot value. There we go. That's a lot of meshes. 
that's a lot of nuts. Right, and then we go map. Uh, nil, and what are we going to do? We're going to pass it to fuck it. Boom! There's a thing. What's this? That looks like a room. <laughs> it looks terrible, but it does look like a room. What is going on there? All right. That's, uh... That bodes well. So we need to handle some... We need to get some textures in here. We need to get a whole bunch of stuff done. But it looks like at least that we got our, uh... Our vertices in the right places. <laughs> right, what's going on over here? Um... Median IRA. The only good terrorists. The home country's terrorists. Anyway. Um, well, there's some prologue chat, which has me very interested. God, I hate that fucking... The speed of this going back to forwards is just disgusting. One second. I mean, it's all disgusting, but that is really aggravating to watch. Where is it? I don't even know where... Oh, so it's doing list directory. Can do that. Um, now. There we go. There we go. That's a bit slower. There we go. Anyway, that'll slow that down for a second. Whew, right. Um, I really wanted to catch up with this prologue chat because that's really awesome. Uh, I want to put say more rain, awesome. Let's cover that for later this year. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> the, the quicker it gets through the rain into the snow, the happier I'll be. But I mean, I actually, really, oh man, the summer's been so good. Um, Mackle's saying, how's work? Convince them to use CL yet? No, and we won't be. I haven't convinced me to use CL on that project. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a game and it uh, makes a lot of sense to do it in Unity. A lot more sense than CL right now. Uh, and for quite a while. It's, uh, it's going well. It's going well. It's been a... Yeah, it's been, it's been quite a headlong run into a bunch of stuff um, that I haven't done before. But it's, it's really fun. Um... I get to lean back on my knowledge from other languages and just, uh, I'm doing at the moment, it's integrating Lua for modding um, and working on some efficiency stuff around that, which is kind of interesting. I want to make sure that we're not, because users can make all different kinds of assets and then they can all be running their own Lua scripts. If we're calling in and out of those scripts, like every hundreds of times, every frame, there's an, obviously an overhead to that, which I was slightly worried about. So I was... Um, because of boxing, mainly, they, when you end up put it, putting objects in proxies and sending them in and maintaining those relationships is, is annoying and garbage collection, blah. So I was working on some uh, things for making that nicer. For example, what, like if you get a position from an object inside Lua, it, we won't give you just a vector three. We'll give you a continual, a, what do we call it? A continual of vector three, uh, which means it's always the position of that object every frame. So then if you take two positions which are continuable, um, or continuous rather and you subtract them from each other then you have a difference that is always up to date no matter where you position these things um, and then you normalize that and now you have a normal that's always pointing from one position to another no matter where those two things are and so you can start composing that into something that runs can run efficiently every frame um, or at least more efficiently than calling in and out of the VM all the time and there's some stuff around that um so yeah, that's fun. <laughs> um, of course, you have to convince them to use Prolog first. Barrett just says, cut. Correct. Um, yeah, I really want to try uh, Temperance. I know that Jace's thing is cool as well, but I like Temperance is so far along, and I've been really interested in getting to Prolog at some point, so doing that in there it would be great fun. Um, let's have a look what else is going on we're rocking through the time but it's not a problem 
Um, just saying, but you don't need f full prologue to get the benefits of logic programming. True that. True that. Um, we got there. Reactions to things actually working? Um, Medians are very nice. Had to get off the freeway to have a proper look. One eye on the road and one... Dude! Stop watching. Watch later. Don't fuck around with your life, for goodness sake. Make me sound like a dad. Um... Jesus Christ. Median. I'm not going to make you lines if you keep doing this, but it's lovely to have you here. <laughs> how are you... Wait, I don't even want to know how you're typing. That's terrifying to me. Um... Embedding CL is difficult. Lewis VM is built for that. Yeah. Yeah, CL's big. <laughs> it's big because of all the stuff it carries around with it, but it, it's it's cool. I mean, it's not that big, but, like, it's enough. I would love to make a game in it, anyway. Um, by the way, your Twitch profile says you still work at Fuse. Oh. I should fix that. Yes, I'll, I'll fix that later. Right. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. Let's, let's do this. Um... Do we have a free for these things? Um, no. Actually, we don't need to put that there. Where are we? Thing. Free fun. Free thing. Thing. Um, all the textures and samplers are cached in a different place and freed separately, so I'm not going to free that. We only really need to free the sampler. From the thing, and... Um, well, we need to free the arrays that are inside it as well, so... Um, how does that work, actually? Let's take... Uh, let's have a look at things. Just remembering the API again. Uh, let's take the first of that. Let's take the slot value of that and sampler. Um, and then call GPU arrays. Um, no, sampler GPU arrays. Arrays. What? Wait a second, not sampler. Sampler is texture related. That's not what I mean. I want the stream. Idiot. Okay. Stream GPU arrays. Or is it just stream? Hmm. Oh no, that's a buffer stream, not a lisp stream. Uh, GPU arrays. There we are. We'll get there eventually. Okay. So, yes, we'll need to do. Um, Not sampler, stream, structure and bind. Stream. Um, yeah. Now, um, free arrays, and then free IRA. I wish I hadn't called that function free. It's too easy to clash with other things. Um, and then what else? And then we can just free the uh, buffer stream itself. Actually, when we free a buffer stream, no, it doesn't free the objects inside it, which makes sense, to be fair. And return nil. There we go. Free stream. There we are. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is, um, if we look at things, um, how do we want to do this? Just a nasty bit of cleanup I want to do. Um, uh, do when type p 
I is asymp thing uh, free I and then oh no wait a second here we go when it's an asymp thing free it's no so if do else collect I then set of things to be that. Does that work? Oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and I just... Oh, you idiot, never mind. Made the free thing function and then I didn't use it. But got a non-list. What? What have I done? Oh yeah, of course. Buffer stream GPU arrays. That's the function we were looking for. Good, finally. That's what I wanted to do. Let's just call this um, black. All right. Free or asin things. This is just a little helper function while we screw around with stuff. Let's play start again and good. We've got rid of all that stuff. Okay. Let's have a look what was going on over here. Um, can you wrap that thing in Asherizing? <laughs> and then just add lizards. Barrett, Barrett, you are on absolute form as usual. And you say just add lizards. Did you watch um, Jam by any chance? The TV version. Or, or Blue Jam if you listen to the radio thing. Because that just reminds me of the Mr. Lizard sketch. Which was oh, incredible. Anyway. Um, hey Kick Ram saying what do you guys think about GitHub Phantomics April by the way. What's April? Let's have a look. Uh, April compiles to a subset of the APL programming language into common Lisp. Huh. That looks rather readable. Oh, I was, about to, I was about to say, that looks rather readable for APL. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, that is not a language I've tried to understand yet. It seems like it's for a different mind than mine. <laughs> Again, very mathematical driven, which I'm just generally not, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, interesting. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time left, so let's keep going. Um, we need textures, right? So there was... Let's if we go back to the scene again. Oh, idiot. And I've stopped it again. Impressive. Luckily it's Lisp. All right. If we go to meshes, a bunch of them had references to a material. So they had like material index four. When I went here, um, this is index four, and it mentions textures. Um, there's height, ambient, and diffuse. So we, at the very least, should be grabbing the diffuse texture. One of the things I'm seeing as well is because this is a relative path, we're going to need to make sure that we can we have the other path to work from, which we do not have in the scene object, which is fair enough, um, but we'll need it. Mm, cold coffee. Um, okay, so for each mesh
we should also grab um, the material index and then we should grab um, how do we do this um, we're going to need the scene to do the next bit so we're going to have to change this to we'll also take the scene um, and we should grab a ref um, so material is a ref into the um, slot value of scene oh no of yeah if scene materials ai materials and we're going to index into it using the mat index Okay, so that should be our material. And then hopefully whichever one it is, um, we'll have, see, not all of them have textures. This one has a texture. So, and it seems to be named like this. So let's use um, this. And then we can say get hash uh, material. What's the key and the hash table like that? Uh, text. Oh no, so yeah. Textures is that, which will be a list of some information. And then we can look up into that uh, what we will. And the main one we'd be interested in. Is ambient. Let's uh, let's just take this list down to the REPL and play with it. So def var temp three that. So we're going to want to get the diffuse, not the ambient, the diffuse. So we can just do um, asoc um, this from temp three, and we get that. Um, Yeah, we don't need to do that, we can just do third. Right, so that's going to be the path. We're also going to need the... Um, scene path. Um, so it's ambient. It's ambient rel path is when textures that and uh, not temp3 it will be textures does that fit there just about no um okay oh man i'm getting really sucked into this again i'm uh because I'm wanting to finish off. Um, well, I want to do something that looks okay. And I'm ignoring you again, which is terrible. I'm, I'm really glad that you guys are here. And I'm sorry when I drift off a bit. Um, the intro text is like a poem. It certainly is. <laughs> GNU APL mode. Oof. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... Barrett says, haven't seen Blue Jam. Blue Jam was the radio show um, that Chris Morris and that did before they did Jam. It is dark as fuck. Um, I re <laughs> really, really... Uh... Yes. Not not for the, the sensitive of humor and not for most of the people other than that either. It's a really enjoyable uh, show, but... It, it's it's the whole thing is presented like when the film ver like the TV version was filmed and the um, radio version is kind of recorded like like you're stuck in a dream so it's very some of it's just slowed down and ambient it's very fucking odd and very oh it's just it's great one of those shows I really enjoy but uh yeah 
when you allow, allow a nutcase to do whatever he wants. Like this, I guess. But with less, well, with a lot more talent in that case. Um, okay, so we might have a, a relative texture path. So now, then, we need to... Um, when we... Yeah, this is what we started with, wasn't it? So let's resurrect this and defund um, load asymp things path. Okay, so a path is going to come in. Like that. Um, Actually, let's just turn this into a function. Even test. Um, so there's a path. Good. Right. And then um, scene. And then we have um, that stuff we did in things. Um, we took the scene and we've got all the meshes and then we ran it through fuck it but now but yeah fuck it just we want to do things a little differently this time so actually that won't work we're going to loop for so we will we will take this at least um, mesh in those and do some stuff. We're going to need to what did fuck it actually do? Um yeah, let's just take all this into one place and mess with it. Okay, so it took this, it made an instance using that thing. Stream. Don't know what I'm doing. Right. Okay, but now we've changed this function, so it also expects the scene path and the scene. So we're going to need to pass in the path. And the scene. Okay, cool. So now we're here. And then for each one of those, we make one of these and push it in. That's great. At the end, let's just return true. Hooray. Um, but this needs recompiling. And it's complaining about stuff nil wise. Oh, yes. Let an empty let here, which is nil. Um, so what are we going to do? We've got the scene path, and it looks like this. So we need to get the directory. Um, so let's just do, oh, I can never remember this stuff. Uh, path name uh, directory, because it was just that? No, OK, so that's, yeah, that's it as a path name. Um, oh, no, that's into a path name and then a directory component. Um, this is where I just grab UIOP. Um, path name, uh, directory path name. That's exactly what I want. Um, ambient rail path. Okay, so that's going to give us the directory. Um, and then we're going to do... Uh, we can just combine some paths. Yeah, it's pretty much safe to trust uh, UIOP to get kind of path stuff right because it's probably the most tested uh, Lisp code that's actually doing path related stuff. Um, there's something for combining um, paths and I can't remember what it was. Oh, 
Oh. Make path name? That might have been it. No, that wasn't it. Can anyone help me out here? What's the thing for combining paths together? So I've got a relative path and I could just have... Um... Yeah, I don't want to fuck around with this really. Path name. I could be really... Oh, actually, let, let, let's just be lazy. Ah. Come on. Just... Ugh. Oh, I just stopped the thing as well. Too eager to hit buttons. 3.png. Like, there we go. Okay, so. Don't need that. Nice. Okay. So we could have just used append. Not append? No. Oh, yeah, appends for lists. Whoops. Ah, fuck it. Let's just go with what we had. Format. There we are. Merge path names. Thank you, sir. That's great. That's what it was. There it is. Man, that's good. Right, so. Deer path and uh, text path is this. Also, we're going to need... Um, Yeah, this is so messy. Actually, do we need any of these anywhere else? No, let's just do text path. When textures take the third thing and we're gonna merge it with this isn't that the thing that we just seen path yeah something like that so we will have a text path if there is a texture to be had Undefined. Oh yeah, that's meant to be let's start. Whoops. Text path is never used. Correct. So um, we can actually do. Let's actually just do sampler then. Um, when textures, we should have um, the ability to do text. Nope. It's uh, get text. Yes, get text path, that's it. Then we can take the sampler. And then we've got this stream object here. And we've got a sampler, which means we can do. I will be back with you guys in a second, but we're gonna get this right while I still have focus. Focus, you fuck! Man, AVE is so cool. I haven't watched that stuff in a while, but I really need to. Um, What's it called? Sampler. Okay, so this is no longer um, ascent mesh to GPU arrays, it's ascent mesh to thing. Um, so then thing. Push thing, thing to things. Right, is that... Oh, who knows? Who knows? Right, so let's start by playing it again, since I know I paused it. Um, running CLS, so it clears it, and then we're going to run this thing, which isn't going to work, and then we can get back to business. Invalid number of arguments, zero. Correct. Hooray. So we can take the team. That's weird, because it's right here. Where's the test function, then? Oh, it's over there. Never mind. Test two. Science. Oh, didn't like that, did it? Oh, it's a list. Yeah, of course. So when I looped across uh, for in, it should have been across. But uh, 
Oh dear, received a null pointer. Oh, it didn't like those textures. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, that kind of scuppers things, actually. So, uh... Hmm. Okay. Alright, let's get back to this. Um... Trippy indeed. Um, Pom de Pimp saying quite hard to understand when you're not an English native person though. Yeah. That, that, that could be true. It's a very particular kind of humor. Um, and now we're into 18 wheeler truck racing. French 18 wheeler truck racing. Um, <laughs> now a message from our sponsor. Ah! I'll have to kick you out if you keep punning, boy. Um. Dara said, seal path names would be awesome, but wild is just awful. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> Born to be wild. You can stay with that one. That's okay. <laughs> French jokes everywhere. Echo Cram said, I've heard the path stuff in CL stand is a bit convoluted. Is that true? Um... Convolve passes, right, Barrett? Path names are the the path names stuff in Lisp is it such a is a, is a really solid idea, as in like don't represent paths as strings. That's a really bad idea because they're a series of tokens, so you may as well represent them like that. Um, but it's one of those parts that, well, at least according to uh, Fare, uh, was rather underspecified. And so some parts of the file paths stuff in the spec is implemented differently, but conformingly in different implementations. And that was one of the things that ASD, uh, SDF, sorry, really struggled with getting right, uh, was patching over all those things. And so when it comes to uh, dealing with file paths, I really like using UIOP um, for when there is a function in there that handles what I'm doing, because they've tested it on a lot of like asdf works on every on on all common lisp implementations from the genera <laughs> like lisp machine and up till now um apparently it works on all of them which is impressive so like whatever they've got they've got they kind of got right but um yeah th there's a few things in there that are just a bit odd i mean it, it makes i mean kind of you can see how it happened because these things evolved at a time when there really there wasn't any kind of normal like standard file paths if different machines had different things you know you might not have files per se everything might be considered a directory or whatever whatever it was on the different things but i mean it had to try and bridge all of those and i like some of the ideas um but it seems like some of the implementation stuff some of the standardization sorry was a bit bit weak and that um yeah is what it is um but if you're interested in that stuff um oh dear let's do far right asdf um how is this heap probably not this is it let's have a look oh really Fuck that. Right. Okay. Let's go back. Um, Fare SDF uh, acceptable scripting. Yes, I think it might have been this. Yeah, it's a heck of a write up. Um, but it goes into, in Appendix C, it goes into path names. And it talks a lot about this. So I'll just link that in the chat now because that's. Uh, I found it an interesting read as someone who's trying to rock bits of ASDF um, but I think I think you could just get quite far with just having a good um, just a good data structure for a path so again like sep separate tokens a flag saying whether it's absolute or relative and then basic math operations to join and do all those kind of things um, 
dealing with representations gets really hard because it gets very shell specific very quickly. Um, I must admit that the the system I've liked best has been um, in Emacs. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's fucking awesome that like like this is obviously I'm just starting. I'm down, doing everything down the mini buffer now. If you just want to see what I'm doing. So again, this is obviously on my machine. So this is to temp. Um, or I can do slash and then a protocol, say FTP or SSH, and then a colon and then a, a user at um, testing dot dice where will suffice dot com. Um, and this is a path to this machine using this user. And you can also nest these. So this would be, I could then do Docker. Um, app at uh, fan test like this. This is a path to this machine. So it's a path to this container with this user in the Docker running on this machine, which I have to SSH to with this user. Um, this shit works. <laughs> this is all part of Tramp, and it works really well. Um, you can also use like uh, ADB, and this is onto your phone. You know, like it, it's fucking cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I use that stuff a lot. It's really helpful, uh, but it, a lot of it's just kind of there, there's value that's stacked on top just because of how Emacs is built. I guess it's uh, yeah, Tramp Tramp is it's just impressive. It's really impressive. Anyway, where are we? Uh, Twenty one fifty two. What what went wrong? Oh yeah, it was the textures. It didn't like loading the textures, did it? Oh fuck, that sucks. Um, hmm. So yeah, if it's not going to load these, we're kind of a, a, an impasse. And I mean, what I'll need to do is just load them up in GIMP and resave them out. Um, I'll just save them as PNG, and then it should be able to. Um... Oh, it... Hey, any of you guys know a quick uh, like one-liner shell command to change all of these into PNGs, or just re-encode them as JPG? But let's do PNG just to up our chances that things are going to work. Um... I don't think we have time for doing all this. Um... Actually, no. Oh, yeah, no. It's going to have to be JPG, isn't it? Because it's going to want them to be in the same thing. Huh. Overwrite. Let's just see. This would be great if we get away with this. Oops. I am really bad at doing the same thing over and over again. That's one of the reasons I fucking love programming. It's because I am the worst robot. After about ten things, I just like just start breaking. Now, this might not do anything, but I'm really hoping that we're just like doing something subtle that I don't understand to the file. Because some um, when I've saved things out of GIMP, generally I've had no problem loading them. Uh, with the CL soil library, um, but then some things it just chokes on, and I don't know why. Uh, probably don't need all of these because some of these are bump maps and stuff like this. But actually, this one's an ambient, isn't it? So, um, not ambient. Fucking. What am I talking about? Albedo. Anyway, right. Who knows? Nope, didn't like it. Oh, so I think that's it for now. Um, we're not going to get any further, so let's just say screw it and um, say continue for a start and get the asset back in the scene because it's nice to see it there. Um,
And um, holy moly. Oh yeah, no texture data means freaking the fuck out. Let's just get rid of that for a second. What was it? Free all asymp things. <laughs> yep, and let's um let's use this instead. Sampler. Whoops. Yeah, let's do this. So we got the model loaded, which we did earlier. We've got that there. Um, I'll go and do whatever I need to do to those files to get them to load. And then next week we'll just carry on, a, carry on fucking around with this stuff. Um, it would be nice to be able to use scenes like these. Um, I'll also look into... We'll need to look into animation because I would like to try GPU skinning as well. Um, but yeah, so I guess next week's thing is just more of this. Um, we've got four minutes left. Let's see what's been going on here. Um, problem with him saying tools like Tramp, Slime, Gnus, uh, Org Mode, etc. Bring the magic to Emacs. They really do. Require CL. Isn't that out of date now? There's one of those ones anyway that you can just get CL stuff in there. It's lovely. Um, Yeah, the problem is if we, uh, I just, I realized partway through, if we change it JPG to PNG, that we're going to have to go and change all the details in the asset file because it's not going to know where to find that stuff. But we are using .obj, aren't we? So maybe we can get away with it? Ooh, let's just grep uh, for JPG and see what we find. Yeah, save. Okay. Spawns and material files seem to be plain text, which is nuts, but sure. Um, so maybe we can do it? So what's the thing? What do I need to do? Um, why, why don't we keep switching? I've got you guys down in a chat down here. Da, 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 da. With image magic, you should be able to do convert. File JPEG to PNG. All right. Okay. Let's uh, 3D models. What am I doing? Uh, image magic. I don't have it. No. Um, sudo apt uh, install image magic. What? Is it just called magic then? Ah, oh. what is image magic called when it's when it's installed? No, no, stop doing that. Oh. No. Oh, what do I need to do? I don't know the command that tells me what that thing installed. Um, convert. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's super weird. Sorry, man. I get you now. Okay, so zero zero scap jpg to zero zero scap dot png. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Um, open zero zero scap dot. Uh, fuck you. Png. All right, whatever. Uh, let's just do it. Let's, um, what is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Can you do, this is just showing how weak I am with uh, path stuff now, as with uh, bash stuff, x arcs minus i, uh, this, um, convert. I'll clean this up afterwards, but <laughs> dot. PNG. Whoa. Um, <laughs> it did not like that. Um, wait a second. What did we do a second ago? We did just that. In and out. Convert. Oh yeah. You need to have. You need to have it in and out. Okay. 
all of those names are fucked, but we will uh, we'll fix them up because now we've got a load of jvg.png stuff. Um, so now what we can do is use stuff I know. Change the WD mode, and then we can say anything that's jpg.png, just rename it to PNG. We replace that text, and then we save, and it goes and updates all those files. That's great. And then we can go to the material file again, and we can look for everything that says jpg, and we can replace it with .png. And let's do that and save it and see if we've broken everything. Now, this would be funny. Um, let's free all the things and say test two and pray. Oh shit, of course, yeah, we're fucking idiot. I've got to uncomment this stuff now, haven't I? Nope. Wow. What is it not like? It is a PNG. Oh well. We gave it a good shot. But it was not to be. Not today anyway. Huh. Oh well. That's cool. We'll try it next time. Thanks so much for uh, giving us the um, the info on image magic. Really weird that they call their tools just convert and stuff like that that seems really uh seems really weird naming but then again you know command line um guix is the most lisby linux guix is interesting i would like um what's the gnu one or is that it because there's two that have that kind of functional package manager thing don't they yeah Maybe, no, maybe Guix was the... Oh, I don't know. Never mind. I switched from Xmonad to BSPWM and then to Stump. It's the best so far. I'm about to switch away from Stump. I'm really, really liking using Emacs in my window manager. That's uh, that's happening soon. Um, convert, convert, convert. People shouting at me. Thank you. <laughs> um... Huh, for I and PNG do convert. That's good to know. Thank you. I will uh I will try and remember that. Oops, you broke it. Yep. Magic. That's a good summary of everything. Thank you so much for sticking around today. Um we got through. It actually went a lot better than I thought it was going to, given how tired I was. Um yeah, we didn't get a whole lot done, but we got something. We got some like uh let's actually just bring it back. Let's uh If we can't have this thing, we'll at least have something. Um, is that okay? Yeah, something like that. We at least got this. And we'll go from here next week. So, right, that's your lot. Thanks, folks. I will catch you soon. Ciao.